us once again. Here we are at Kiyoki Chapel. I'm Mert Shane, and it's a pleasure to be able to share God's Word with you this day. Remember that uh, we give you thanks for the gifts that you contribute. Please remember that we now have a new opportunity to give utilizing the conference website, which is epaumc.org. And if you look for e-giving, you'll be able to find Kiyoki Chapel. It may also be listed as Paradise Valley. And so please make sure that you give, whether it's one week or for the month or for the year. Uh, it's great to have your contribution so that we can continue our ministry. Uh, so we give God thanks for you and your participation in helping us continue this ministry. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Breathe in and exhale easily. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Let the Spirit begin to move through you as you prepare for worship today. We'll begin with our call to worship. We were, each one of us, taken below the waters. We, each one of us, died with Christ in baptism. And we were, each one of us, raised, dripping to newness of life. We were, each one of us, born again. Breathing in for the first time the breath of God. The life-creating spirit that dreamed us, each one, into being. And we, each one of us, live in the hope of living up to this newness and of not letting it down. May it be so. And when it isn't, May we breathe in God and dream again. Let us pray. God, again and again you call us into a journey, a journey where good news is shared, where new people are encountered, where our plans are changed. Help us to be attentive to your invitation, to be courageous, to pay attention, and to celebrate your work in us and through us. Help us see your presence when difficulties come, when plans change, and when we have to find a new way. May the people we meet, the strangers we host, and the companion we travel with become a sign and symbol of your saving promise. In the name of Jesus, who sends us on the way. Amen. And now for our children's song. Well, we don't have anyone with us today, but we'll go right ahead. You'll notice that I have several different types of devices in my hands. You'll notice that these are fairly common for all of us, and there are different things like my watch, as to different measuring devices. The only other one that I don't have is a measuring device for our weight. But that's okay. We'll move along. In terms of looking at all those different measuring devices, 
how would you use them to measure God's love? Would be very difficult to do that. Because what do we know about God's love? God's love is immeasurable. We can't measure it because it's so great. What kind of words do you think of when you think of big? Well, there's huge, there's grandiose, there's all kinds of words that we have, but none of them can compare to God's love. God's love is enormous. It goes forever, regardless of where we are or what we do, how big or small we are, God loves us. So let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for your love that is bigger than life, is larger than we can imagine. Your love goes on and on, from beginning to end, Alpha and Omega. And for that we give you thanks. Bless our children. Help them in their growth, in their understanding of your love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come together for our time of prayer today, we want to lift up uh, and keep them in our prayers all those that are sacrificing their lives for us in numerous different ways. Uh, we think about those that are close to us that are ailing and some that are shut in. Uh, we know that even though we are in the yellow zone and we could start returning back to service, um, some of our sister churches are returning and some are not. Um, many of us are waiting for that word so that we can go back to worshiping close to what we used to. And so we lift up those things in our prayers, all the different concerns uh, of many of the pastors, their situations, their families and friends and their congregants, um, all of which are in our prayers, even though we may not name them one by one. Um, our relatives, our friends, our family, our church members, we're praying for all of you this day. And so let us pray. Help us to be the people that you have called us 
and made us to be. Through all the violence and disturbance and the hunger, the yearning to be free, but not feeling comfortable in our lives. Give us peace. Give us comfort. Surround us with your loving arms as we face the difficulties ahead. Oh God, the things that are on our hearts and minds, the illnesses, the deaths, the challenges that we encounter within our world as well as within our community and our own homes. Give us guidance. Help us to endure. Oh God, we have many challenges that we wrestle with. Help us in our struggles. Give us the words to use to calm the waters, to be able to show your love wherever we are, and to be able to extend that love to others. Oh God, help us so that we can give you the thanks and the praise in all that we do and everywhere we go. We give you thanks that Gloria has finished her radiation treatments and for the good news of baptisms, for the recognition of all the people that are watching us online. For Tom, who makes the DVDs, the CDs, as well as the videos for church, we give you thanks. Oh God, bless those that are struggling. And we lift up Cindy and Michael Stiff Jr. and George Rolls and all the others that are on our prayer list. Give them your peace. Oh God, we pray for Jim and Karen Todd, who Jim has lost his father. We pray for Gary Nicholson, as he has lost his father recently. As well as all of our pastors, we celebrate the upcoming wedding of Misty. Bless each of them all that they do. We pray these and other prayers in your Son, Jesus' name, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
thanks for playing our background music for us so that we can feel your, the Holy Spirit as we come together. We give thanks for all those that have given out of their pockets so that uh, our ministry can go on, and so let us pray. God, your gift to us is life. Our gift to you is how we choose to live life, including our choices of offerings to advance your work in the world. So take these gifts from our hands, loving God, along with our prayer, that they will help accomplish not what we will, but what you intend. Multiply our seed sown this day. We pray. Amen. Hello, everyone. Our gospel lesson is from Matthew chapter 9, starting at verse 35, and going through chapter 10, uh, verse 8. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. He called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or any, enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, Freely you give. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, as the scriptures are read, may your word be heard. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Today's lesson is taken from Psalm 116, verses 1 and 2, and then verses 12 through 19. Now, it may seem familiar to you because I use this same text on the third Sunday of Easter. But as God would have it, it was duplicated for our lectionary with some slight variations. And so hear this story from Psalm 116. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice, he heard my cry for mercy, because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, 
the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. May God have a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. You'll note our text talks about being is a part of that thanksgiving story within Psalm. It's a personal thanksgiving. You'll notice the terms and the use of the word I and how I love the Lord. And it pays special attention to listening, that God listens to us. How often do we listen to God? How often do we listen to one another truly listening and not trying to talk over them? Too often we have spent time where we think we're listening, but we're more concerned about coming up with the thoughts about how do we reply when others are speaking. Case in point, right now our country and our world is going through the challenges of the issues of racism. And many of us don't want to talk about it because it's a tough subject to deal with. Many of us won't talk about it within our families. We won't talk about it on the streets. We won't talk about it with our peers. And so where do we spend time talking about it? Many times it goes underground and doesn't get surfaced. And we don't talk about what's really at issue. You see, when we are in fear, we stop talking. And so we go into that stress mode of fight or flight instead of dealing with the issue. As we spend time knowing that God listens to us, do we have the capability to listen to others? instead of trying to be forthcoming with our own stories or rebutting what it is that they say. Instead of just hearing it as their truth. And so we need to be careful how we have our discussions, but having the discussions instead of skirting it to the side. The scripture helps us to stay focused on what we need to give back to God as a means of thanksgiving, but to each other as an offering from God. Are we willing to tell the story of our predicament, but also are we willing to listen to the stories of others? If I had you sitting with me right now, I'd couple you up and say, I want you to share with one another your story as it involves the issue of racism. Now, part of our problem and part of what we hear on the news and within the media is the fact that people aren't willing to define what's at issue. They're not willing to share what it is that they think racism is. And so, so often people say, well, I'm not racist. I couldn't be racist because da 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 da. 
without having a true understanding of what racism really is. And then you start to throw in the other terms of individual versus institutional versus system, systemic racism, and people just don't want to deal with it. They don't want to see what's obvious to others. They don't want to hear the stories of the trauma that others have experienced. How many of you have contacted someone in the last several weeks and found out how are they doing and to be able to deal with the issue of racism? Have you had that discussion? Have you been willing to share with your mate and with others the difficult topic? Are you hiding out? You see, I've noticed that this week I didn't receive calls relative to people wanting help to talk about the issue. That's scary. And I know there are many of you from our congregation and many of you throughout the country that struggle, that need guidance, need someone to monitor their discussions. We are all afraid of saying the wrong thing. Every one of us. Some of us go so far as to stick our foot in our mouth and make mistakes over and over and over again without recognizing truth, without being able to deal with specialists in the area, without talking to our advisors, the knowledgeable people, listening to what it is that they want to tell us about the issue, to help us to have the discussion. God is hoping that you can start the discussion. That you are willing to call folks and deal with the issue. You see, people deal with the issue like babies. They need to be guided. They need some understanding of what it is that's really going on. I noticed today that uh, in a letter from one of my colleague's sermons, he looked at something from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And it was during the 60 Minutes interview where Dr. King said I think we've got to see that a riot is the language of the unheard and what it is is it America has failed to hear it has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met and it has failed to hear that large portions of white society are more concerned about tranquility and status quo than about justice and humanity. What, it is, what is it that America has failed to hear? What it is that those who claim to stand beside me and beside you have failed to hear. You failed to hear me saying to you, I can't get up. I can't move. I can't breathe. Why? Because your knee has been on my neck, crushing me for what seems like all eternity. That statement from Dr. King 
is as true then as it is true today? Are we willing to acknowledge what people are crying and saying in the streets? Oh, I can't condone violence, but I can tell you this. If we don't start listening to one another, it's going to get worse. We have to show the love of God in all that we do and everywhere we go. To be able to listen to one another and say, tell me your story. I truly want to hear. Being able to share your faith. You see, in this scripture, did you notice that it talks about the death of the faithful is a costly loss to God's eyes. We have to stand up. We have to be the people of God to say, I want to hear. I want to make sure that all are represented at the table. I want to make sure that the love of Christ is here, willing and able to listen and not to overrun you. We have a challenge. You have a challenge before you. Are you willing to keep your vow to God to be a faithful servant, to know the love of God and to be able to share that? in all that you do. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for lessons learned, for scriptures, and as we wrestle with challenges, help us to acknowledge your love. Help us to acknowledge each other. Give us the strength to listen and to love in all that we do and everywhere we go. I pray in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. And now for our benediction. May the one who sends us into the world to heal, resurrect, cleanse, and exercise Fill you, use you, and send you with the blessing of God, who is our creator, sustainer, and redeemer.